Hello, this is Professor of Medicine Desiree Dubonnet from the International Medical University. And we're going to be talking about VARHO today. Talking about the voltage, amperage, resistance, hydration, oxygenation. I want to shoot a little video here about VARHOPE, voltage, amperage, resistance, hydration, oxygen, proton pressure, electron pressure. Validation and verification of claims is the law. We registered the EPFX 31 years ago. Oh my God, registered with the FDA in America. Inside there is the electrophysiological reactivity index of no sodes, sarcos, outer sodes. These different things were in the registration, all done through evidence-based research published in peer-reviewed medical journals. And along with that, especially came the VARHOPE, the ability to measure the voltage, amperage, resistance, hydration, oxygenation. This was also part of the EPFX original registration with the FDA back in 1989, over 31 years ago. This historic event really allowed a different type of electrical function. Now we've done different types of patents to be able to patent this technology in order to give it to you. Now the EPFX patent was done here in Hungary originally, and now it has an international. We've registered all around the world so that basically people can see that we're using electrophysiological measures to measure the VARHOPE and the electrophysiological reactivity. Now, if we look at the body electric, we can see that there is an ability of the body to act like a battery. You see, and it can run down. You can run down your amperage. We can measure your voltage and amperage. And with this technology, we can make our children smarter by charging up their battery. We're able to then help them in a hundred different ways. Now, when the, our battery is discharging, as we see our battery here, and then as time goes by, the battery will lower, because we're using amperage for light function. This is what happens with the battery in our telephone. We get a little description. And eventually the battery will go down to zero. But we could recharge the human battery with our technology. Just what is the nature of this little acronym, this, uh, these electrical measures of the body, and what is the history of this? Well, the basic voltage of the body can be measured by brain wave or heart rate, where we can see the amplitude of the volt pattern. The volt pattern, the amplitude, tells us the direction and the capacity of the body to make that amplitude is equivalent to the capacity of the body to make the voltage. This is different in most people as that there's a wide range from a basic bottom minimum up to a high maximum. Certain people have more electricity in their body. This has to do with their a body's ability to handle electricity. So the baseline factors of the cranial measures will give us an idea of the voltage vector, which here corresponds to the X thing of the electropotential. There is such a thing as the human battery. The different cells all have to have a cellular charge across the membrane. If that gets weak, we get sick. If it gets very strong, then we get maybe too sick. But there's a balance factor that allows us to work with biology. We can measure these with the SCIO and then measure the electrophysiological factors of the interstitial fluid. And this has to do with the osmosis factors and the electropotential of the membrane. So there is a body electric that can be measured. And we can see these factors and measure these factors with the SCIO. Now when we get to the next capacity, we're talking about the amperage. We've shown this in the basic diagram that the amplitude or high vector, the X factor here, is an indication of the voltage. Underneath the graph is an indication of the amperage. Now we can see here in a low amp state, a virtually the same type of voltage, but here in another voltage 
of the same voltage in a high amp state. So that the amperage gives us an idea of how much viable charged particles, viable electrons, viable protons this person has. The more, the better, the better for life. Of course, we can't get too much, and that can create a problem. Resistance has to do with the flow of electricity through the body. If we look at the basic formula of Dr. Ohm, volts equals amps times resistance. This gives us a basic idea, and it's not a perfect mathematical formula, it's what is known as a correlate. In any system, volts is approximately equal to amps times resistance. As voltage goes up, amps will go down in order to maintain the equality. As we look at this, the resistance is the flow of electricity, and the flow of electricity can be impeded by heavy metals, lack of nutrition, lack of water, lack of fatty acids, lack of minerals, and a host of other things that can impede the resistance. The resistance also is a vector of reactance, as that the change in volts added to the change of amps added to the change of resistance equals the reactance of a system. The total reactance of a system cannot be determined by simple resistance measures. We need voltage and amperage measures plus resistance to get the reactance measure. Once we get this and we measure over a period of time these measures of volts and amps and resistance, we can now do a simple formula to give us an idea of induction or magnetic properties. If we look into the idea of the right-hand rule, if an electron travels like my thumb, there is a magnetic field made at 90 degrees and an electrostatic field made at another 90 degrees. Thereby, all electricity has a component of static electricity and magnetic. We can measure the magnetic charge and the capacitance charge by measuring a multiple series of volts and amps and this will give us an inductance and a capacitance index of the patient. And that can give us hydration scores or oxidation scores. The capacitance scores give us a reflection of the electrolytic strength, which is a correlate of the hydration. The inductance or magnetic can tell us about the oxidation redox potential and thereby give us an indication of oxidation in the body. Since the pH is a measure of, of negative charges versus positive charges, we can now get an electrical measure of the different parts of the body and get a pH score or an EH score, proton or electron. So thereby we have the idea of Varhoek. This is an indicator of the health of the system. There are norms for people. There are uh, people can get too high, people can get too low, and we can use an electrical device that would gradually stimulate and stabilize the VARHO. How do we do this? The human body is designed to resist electrical stimulation, but if we find just the right harmony by measuring the volts and amps of the patient, and by finding the right harmony, we can be able to trickle in electrons into the body and stabilize their VARHO. That is the principle that we've been able to validate through the research here at the Maitreya Corporation with the SCIO to be able to show that the system can measure the VARHO and can change and enhance the body electric. Thank you. So we can jumpstart our brain with the Eductor technology, with the EPFX technology. We can charge back up your battery for sport and school performance.